CataractCoach.com, the double cap thoraxis technique. We've done this before. It's a great way to decompress with intumescent white cataracts. So we spread the video up. Our guest certain here is going to do a great job. Look at that main incision being done. I like the draping, by the way. Beautiful on the draping. Eyes in good position in primary. And let's see, probably some anesthetic going inside the eye here. There we go. That'll help dilate the pupil too. Maybe some epinephrine or phenylephrine in there. And then, of course, we're going to do the tripan blue dye stain. So with the tripan blue dye, get that inside the eye. A little air bubble first there, a little bit of tripan. Yep, that looks great. Yeah, you want to be cautious and not do an overfill of the tripan because what if there is any zonulopathy? You don't want to have a loss of your red reflex. So just enough staining going in. Here comes the viscoelastic. And now the double rexus technique means first creating a small rexus. Now, I tend to like to go in through a paracentesis and first decompress that way, but you can do it like this. And so once that's done, now you've got some leaking uh, leakage of the liquefied lens milk. There's more viscoelastic going inside the eye. Let's just get that first baby rexus done post-haste. Let's get it done fast. So you want that small rexus done because a rexus has an advantage because there are no edges that can run out. So you've, as long as it's somewhat round or somewhat curvilinear, it doesn't really matter the exact shape. Just get something done like this, and you see how it uh, wants to run out on you even. But this is now secure. Now you can really decompress the bag. Go in the bag. You can aspirate out any liquefied lens cortex. You can rock the nucleus. Remember, look at this eye going inside the eye. That's a cynical cannula, but you can put your eye probe in too. Look at that aspirating and getting out all that liquefied lens material from the capsular bag. This is the risk of, of having a capsular run out if you don't decompress it and don't leave and don't remove all that liquefied lens material. So here it's all beautifully removed. Now there's virtually zero risk of lens capsular run out. So now you can put more viscoelastic in the eye. You can nick that and then start and get your big rexes done. So here, oh, using just the blade to widen up the incision a little bit. Okay. Using some scissors, a little cut in the capsule, and now create your full-size ideal capsule rex of about five millimeters or so. So now you can go inside, grab that edge that you just cut, and let's get that going around, around, around. And that looks pretty good. Very nicely done here. And so this is just the best way of doing it for most people. Just do the double rexus technique. Some sort of way to decompress the capsule bag. Remember, liquefied lens material is not only in front of the nucleus, right, between the anterior lens capsule and the nucleus, but it's also behind the nucleus, between the nucleus and the posterior lens capsule. So you want to rock the nucleus around or go inside the capsule bag with a Simcoe or BSS cannula or IA probe, something to really just decompress and get that liquefied lens material out. And then, at this point, look at this, so easy to just do some nice chop techniques here. Beautiful chopping, by the way. These white cataracts, if they're not brunescent at all, chop really easily. You just go into them, look at that, they fracture so simply. So easy to remove these pieces, very efficient, beautiful technique here. Look at the chopper now, safety side down. I like that, protect the posterior capsule. There is no lens cortex that's weighing down the capsule bag, so that chopper is putting that blunt end down towards the capsule just to be sure. Hey, let me tell you about the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. Every Sunday, we've got an hour episode interviewing a guest with the sole purpose of making you a more successful ophthalmologist. It really is that good. Podcasts are available everywhere. There's no excuse. Now, go inside here. Now, Simcoe cannula again. So Simcoe cannula. I'm not sure why you don't want to use an IA probe if you've got the phaco machine already set up there. But cleaning out that capsule bag, sometimes these white caddis, you can't get out all the lens material. Sometimes there's some fibrotic stuff stuck to the posterior capsule. Or, eh, it's okay, too. Remember, what we're looking at is an incredible delta, the difference between before and after. Before, this patient had no vision, hand motion at best, probably light perception. After surgery, this patient's going to have fantastic vision. So if you need to come back in three months and do a little YAG laser capsulotomy, that's no big deal either. You can always come back and do that. Again, not, a, not an issue at all here. So everything's cleaned up very nicely here. In these eyes, obviously, your lens calculation is going to be a little more challenging. Think about it because you don't have an optical way of measuring the axial length. So what I do in these eyes is I'll use, obviously, an ultrasound A-scan. But I'll A-scan both eyes. Let's say the patient has a not-so-bad cataract in the other eye. And you can get the optical biometry of the second eye. Well, then I'll, I'll also do an A-scan of both eyes, including the eye that I already have an optical axial length. Why? 
just to see if my technique that day or my calibration is about the same. And then I know if the reading from my A scan on the good eye, the one that doesn't have much of cataract, matches the optical biometry axial length reading pretty closely, then I'm pretty convinced that what I've measured for this white cataract eye, using the same day, same technique, same hand, same everything, is going to be pretty accurate too. And then when in doubt, hey, for most cases, a little myopia is not a bad thing. If your lens power is in, in the 20 range, yeah, you could okay to add a little bit extra, let the patient end up being a little myopic. If the eye power is on the higher end, maybe more for just plain or because the patient's used to being hyperopic. At the end here, sealing up these incisions, this looks great. Again, patient's going to be so absolutely thrilled. Try the double rexus technique. So when you have one of these cases, double rexus technique. Now, there are other, other methods as well. We've talked about all those in Cataract Coach. In fact, if you go to the Cataract Coach website, there's an entire section about white cataracts. And you can learn all the various techniques. Check it out. It's a lot better than just searching here on YouTube. CataractCoach.com your favorite website.